Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 30. In this video, we're going to learn about solving linear systems in two variables using matrix methods. So in this lesson, I want to talk a little bit about another method used to solve linear systems. So, so far we've learned how to use graphing, substitution, and elimination. But we're going to push ourselves a little bit further and now talk about matrix methods. So as we move higher in math, things are going to become more complex. Matrix methods allow for us to solve very large linear systems using a computer very, very quickly. So we're not going to cover all of the details related to a matrix. But what we will do is give an introduction and show one method for finding a solution using a matrix. So let's start out with the very basics here. So a matrix is an ordered array of numbers, and it's just a way to store numerical information. So you'll see my brackets here, and in the brackets you have two rows, okay, two rows. This would be a row going across. So you have two of those, and you have three columns. So the columns are going down. So a matrix is named according to the number of rows and columns it contains. It's rows first, followed by columns. So as an example, if I see this matrix here, you see that you have one, two, three rows. So three going across. So three is the first number. And you have one, two, three, four columns. So four is the second number. So this is a three by four matrix. Similarly, with this guy right here, you have one, two, three rows. So it's a three rows there, and you have one, two columns. So this is a three by two matrix. So another little kind of definition that you'll come across, you have a square matrix. And let me highlight that. A square matrix has the same number of rows as columns. So here I have two rows and two columns. So this is a two by two matrix. As another example of a square matrix, we have three rows here and we have three columns. So this is a three by three, right? And you can have anything by anything. So you can have four by four or 27 by 27, as complex as you wanna make that. All right, so I wanna start out today with a very basic example. So we have the linear system, two X minus five Y equals negative 14. We have seven X minus seven Y equals 14. I have here start with an augmented matrix. Before we get into that, I want you to notice that we have each equation already written in standard form. So you want to start by putting AX plus BY is equal to C. Both equations in this form. Now, once you've done that, you can write this augmented matrix. What this is, is I'm going to take the numerical information only. So in other words, the coefficient for X is a 2. So I'm going to write a 2. The coefficient for y here is a negative 5. So I'm going to write negative 5. The constant is negative 14. So I'm going to write negative 14 there. So that's my first row. It represents the numerical information from the first equation of the system. My second row is the same thing. So I have a 7 for x. I have a negative 7 for y. And I have a positive 14 as my constant. Now I'm going to put my brackets here. And with the augmented matrix, we use a vertical bar to separate the coefficients from the constants. So my coefficients are here. Okay, these are the coefficients. And these are my constants. So I'm just going to put a vertical bar right here. So from this information here, we can get a solution for x and y. Now, in order to do that, we're going to use these elementary row operations. And there's three of them. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so I have here, we can manipulate our matrix using row operations. These produce matrices that lead to linear systems with the same solution set as the original system. All right, so here's our row operations. The first thing is that we can interchange any two rows. That makes sense because if I had an equation and another equation, it doesn't matter which one I write on top. Right? I can switch that around as much as I want. The second thing is we can multiply any row by a non-zero number. Well, that makes sense. I can multiply both sides of an equation by a non-zero number. I could divide both sides of an equation by a non-zero number. 
and the equation would contain the same solution set. So the last row operation we're gonna talk about, row operation three, is a little bit challenging to understand. So we have here that we can multiply a row by a real number and add this to the corresponding elements of any other row. So when people first see this, they say, well, what makes this legal? Well, essentially we're using the same basic principles that we use when we use the elimination method. So we're gonna quickly look at a different example and I wanna just cover why this would work. So let me just take an aside from that problem that we're currently working on. So just put that to the side, take out a fresh sheet of paper, and I want you to work through this very basic example with me. So if we have 2x plus 3y equals 11, and we have x plus 2y equals 7. So we can easily solve this using elimination at this point. So I want to do elimination, and I want to do the matrix method, I'm not going to go all the way through it. I'm just going to go to the part where it's obvious what the solution is. So if I wanted to solve this with elimination, what would I do? Well, let's go ahead and say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Well, I know that I can eliminate x if this was negative 2 here. And the way I can do that is I can multiply both sides of this equation by negative 2. So if I did that, what I would have is a negative 2x plus negative 4y equals negative 14. So I could write that I have 2x plus 3y equals 11, and I have this other one, negative 2x minus 4y is equal to negative 14. Okay, so now we all know at this point that the x variable would be eliminated. So I could add the two left sides of the equation, set that equal to the sum of the right sides of the equation. So 2x minus 2x would be 0. x is eliminated. That's gone. 3y minus 4y is negative y. And this is equal to, let me kind of move this down a little bit, 11 minus 14, which would be negative 3. So we all know that y is 3. So y is 3. Now I can plug a 3 back in here and figure out what x is. 2 times 3 is 6, so I would have x plus 6 equals 7. We know x would be 1, right? x is equal to 1. Now, I want to just show you this real quick using a matrix so I can relate the steps. So the first thing is we want an augmented matrix. So I just told you, we take the numerical information. Again, these equations are written in standard form. ax plus by equals c. So I have my coefficient for x, my coefficient for y, and my constant written in that order. I'm going to write in the same order here. So this is understood to be a 1, so just a 1, a 2, and a 7. I've got a vertical bar that separates the coefficients from the constants. Now, using the numerical information only, I can do the same thing that I did here. I want to think about how could I get a zero here so that the coefficient for x is a zero and x is essentially eliminated. I would have some number times y equals some value, which is what I had here. So I'm gonna show you that. I can use the elementary row operations. I can say, if I multiplied row two here by negative two, which is exactly what I did here. Remember I had the second equation, I multiplied it by negative two, and I produced negative two x minus four y equals negative 14. So if I multiplied row two by negative two, one times negative two is negative two. Two times negative two is negative four. Seven times negative two is negative 14. And then I added those elements to row one. So negative two plus two would be what? That would be zero. So I'd have a zero here. Then negative four plus three would be negative one. Then negative 14 plus 11 would be negative three. Now I don't need to change this row here because I already have what I need there. So I can just leave this as one, two, and seven, okay? But it wouldn't matter if I wrote negative two, negative four, and negative 14 there. 
But for the purposes of working with a matrix, we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave this row unchanged. Now, I have the same information here that I have here. I know that the coefficient of x is 0, so x is eliminated. I know that the coefficient for y is negative 1. So basically, I have negative 1 y is equal to negative 3. So from this information here, I can solve for y, OK? And then I can go back and figure out what x is. Now, this isn't exactly how we're going to solve using a matrix, but it's just an example of how we can manipulate the numerical information to get a solution. So I want to return now to the official procedure. Again, this is just a little side note. You can, you can kind of get rid of this now. And let's go back to the original problem. What our goal is actually going to be, we have this term known as row echelon form, and you're also going to hear reduced row echelon form. I'm going to cover both of them, but I want to focus on row echelon form for now. So what you want is ones down the diagonal. So starting at the top left, you have a one. Then going this way, you'd have another one. Now, beneath the ones, you're going to put a zero. Okay, So this has to be a zero. Now, you're going to have real numbers above and to the side. So this is A, B, and C just representing real numbers. If I have something in row echelon form, and again, these equations are AX plus BY equals C, well, I know that I'd have 1X plus AY is equal to B in this case, right? just using generic information. And I know here that I have 0X, so X is eliminated, plus 1Y, or just Y, equals C. So from this, if I know y equals c, I can plug in for y here, and I can find out what x is. Again, we're just taking the numerical information and finding our solution. So again, this is row echelon form. So I want you to write that down. And then once we get this down, I'm going to show you reduced row echelon form, which isn't any more complicated. All right, so I want to return now to the system that we were starting with. So again, it's 2x minus 5y equals negative 14. It's 7x minus 7y equals 14. So let's copy this information. And we'll copy this and we'll bring it down to a new sheet of paper. So again, we have 2x minus 5y equals negative 14. We'll call this equation 1. And then for equation 2, we'll have 7x minus 7y equals 14. All right. So again, write the augmented matrix. Just the numerical information, that's all we want. So we want 2, we want negative 5, and we want negative 14. We want 7, we want negative 7, and we want 14. A vertical bar will go right here to separate the coefficients from the constants. And our goal is what? Again, I want 1's down the diagonal. So I want this to be a 1, and I want this to be a 1. So down the diagonal, okay, that's going to be a 1. Beneath the diagonal, I want a 0. And then these numbers here would be real numbers. So how do we achieve that goal? Well, again, we're going to use our row operations. So how could I make 2 a 1 using the row operations? Well, I could simply multiply every number in this row by 1 half. 2 times 1 half equals 1. So if I do that, what would I get? 2 times 1 half, again, is 1. Negative 5 times 1 half is negative 5 halves. And negative 14 times 1 half is going to be negative 7. Now, for this one, I have 7, negative 7, and 14. I haven't done anything there. OK, so now that we have this as a 1, we want to make 7 into a 0. It's best to work a column at a time. So starting here and working down. If I wanted 7 to be a 0, what could I do? Well, I could multiply 7 by 0, but that's not going to work. right? We can't multiply both sides of an equation by 0 and maintain the same solution. That's a violation. So what I have to do is I have to multiply this row here by something and add it to this to get this to be 0. So first and foremost, what can I add to 7 to make it 0? Well, obviously, negative 7. 
So that means I need to multiply one by some value and it needs to give me negative seven so that when I add it to seven, I get a value of zero. So one times what would give me negative seven? One times negative seven. So that means I'm gonna multiply row one by negative seven. And when I do that, what am I gonna get? Well, one times negative seven is negative seven. Negative five halves, negative five halves times negative seven would be 35 halves. And then negative seven times negative seven is gonna be 49. So I'm gonna take that information and I'm gonna add it to each element here. So this row one, I'm just gonna keep it the same. Remember, I don't have to change it. Negative seven plus seven is zero. So 35 halves plus negative seven. So plus negative seven. I multiply this by two over two. That would be negative 14 over two. And 35 minus 14 would give me 21. So this is 21 halves. And then lastly, I have 49 plus 14. So 49 plus 14 would give me 63. Okay, so now let's scroll down. The next thing I wanna do, since I have a one here and a zero here, remember I want ones down the diagonal. So how can I make this into a one? Well, that's easy. 21 halves times the reciprocal, which would be two over 21, would equal one. So just multiply row two by two over 21. So multiplying zero by anything is zero. So let's just start out by saying this is one, this is negative five halves, this is negative seven, so that's all the same. Zero again times two over 21 is still zero. Two over 21 times 21 over two is one. And then 63 times two over 21 well, 63 divided by 21 is three. So this cancels with this and gives me three. Three times two is six. Now, what do I have here? Well, I have row echelon form. I have ones down the diagonal. I have a zero below and I have real numbers here, here, and here. So once I'm in that format, I have enough information to get a solution. Remember, this is AX plus BY equals C. So forget about this top row. The bottom row is basically one Y is equal to six. So I know that Y here is equal to six. Now I can take this information and plug it in here. For this guy right here, I have that one X or just X plus negative five halves times Y, Y is six is equal to negative seven. So I know if I do a little bit of math here, six divided by two is three. Negative five times three is negative 15. So we would have X minus 15 is equal to negative seven. We would add 15 to each side of the equation. And we would have that X is equal to eight. So X equals eight, Y equals six. So I'm gonna write that X equals eight, Y equals six, or the ordered pair eight comma six. Now, let's check this real quick. I'm not gonna check any in the future because of the interest of time, but I just wanna show you that this works. So we have two times, put it into eight for X, minus five times, plug in a six for Y, this equals negative 14. Two times eight is 16, minus five times six is 30. This should equal negative 14, and it does. 16 minus 30 is negative 14, so negative 14 equals negative 14, so it works out here. For the next equation of the system, we have what? We have that seven X, so seven times eight, minus seven Y, Y is six, equals 14. Seven times eight is 56, minus seven times six is 42. Does that equal 14? Yes, it does. You get 14 equals 14, so it works out here as well. So I know you might be a little a little confused on this. It's, it's okay. It's something new. It's something that you just have to practice, but hopefully you can see the concept and understand what we're doing. We're basically just taking the numerical information and we're using the elimination method, but we're doing it in a more compact way. So let's take a look at the next example. So we have negative 9x minus 9y equals negative 27. We have negative 5x minus 4y equals negative 20. So again, I'm gonna take the numerical information here. So a negative nine, another negative nine, and a negative 27. I have a negative five, a negative four, 
and a negative 20. And again, you want to make sure that these equations are written in standard form. AX plus BY equals C. Both of them on top of each other. Verify that the X's are in the same place, the Y's are in the same place, the coefficients are in the same place, so that your information is correct. So you have your vertical bar, okay, that separates the coefficients from the constants. And so we have our augmented matrix. All right, so remember, we want ones down the diagonal. Okay, so we want this to be a one, and we want this to be a one, and we want a zero below, and then these can be real numbers. All right, so let's get started. How would I make negative nine into a one using the row operations? Well, that's easy. I can always multiply negative nine by the reciprocal, which is negative one ninth. If I multiply negative nine by negative one ninth, I know that this would be one. If I multiply negative nine by negative one ninth, again, I'm gonna get a one. If I multiply negative 27 by negative one ninth, this cancels with this and I get a three here. So negative three times negative one would be three. And then now I have this row negative five, negative four and negative 20. All right, so now I want this next guy here, negative five. Remember, I work a column at a time. So I want this to be a zero. So what can I do? Well, again, I want to add something to negative five to give me zero. Well, I know negative five plus five would give me zero. So in order to do that, I would multiply the first row here by five, right? Because one times five would give me five. So if I multiply the first row, one times five would equal five. One times five would again equal five. And then three times five would be 15. So I'm gonna take these results here and add them. So my first row, I'm just gonna keep it the same. One, one, and three. So five plus negative five is zero. Five plus negative four is one. And then 15 plus negative 20 is negative five. Now, it just so happens that this is an easy example and I've already got what I want, which is row echelon form. I've got ones down the diagonal, I've got a zero over here, and I've got real numbers here. So again, once we have it in this format, we can use substitution to find our solution. So I know that from this bottom row here, I would have one Y or just Y is equal to negative five. In the top part here, I have that x plus y, right, because I have one x plus one y is equal to three. So just plug in a negative five here, and you'd find that x minus five equals three. Add five to each side of the equation, and you're gonna get that x is equal to eight. So the solution for this system would be that x is equal to eight, y is equal to negative five, right? Or as an ordered pair, you could say eight comma negative five. And you can pause the video, go back to the system, and check it. And verify that it's the correct solution. I've already done that, so I know that 8 comma negative 5 is the solution. All right, let's take a look at one more example. And what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to show you reduced row echelon form as well as row echelon form. Okay, and I'm going to explain the difference between the two. So we have 5x minus 6y equals 24. We have 2x plus 7y equals negative 28. So again, ax plus by equals c. So you make sure your equations are in that format. Again, a lot of textbook examples are going to jamble things up. So it's not in that format. You've got to write it that way so your information is consistent. All right. So I have a 5, a negative 6, and a 24. The information here, I have a 2, I have a 7, and I have a negative 28. So I have my vertical bar that separates the two, right? The coefficients from the constants. And now we get to work. So again, we're gonna talk about row echelon form first. So that's ones down the diagonal, a zero over here, and real numbers here. So let's start with the first column here. How can I make five into a one? Well, I can multiply row one by one fifth, right? Five times its reciprocal of one fifth gives us one. So if I multiply five times a fifth, I get one. If I multiply negative six by a fifth, 
I get negative 6 fifths. If I multiply 24 by a fifth, I get 24 fifths. And then row 2 stays the same for now. So 2, 7, and negative 28. Okay. So let's scroll down. Now, again, working at a column at a time, how could I make 2 into a 0? Well, I think about row 1 here. To get 2 into a 0, I've got to add 2 to its opposite, which is negative 2. So what can I multiply 1 by to get a result of negative 2? Well, of course, just negative 2. So if I multiply row 1 by negative 2, 1 times negative 2 gives me negative 2. Negative 6 fifths times negative 2. I know the negatives would cancel. You'd basically have 12 fifths. And then 24 fifths. 24 fifths times negative 2 would be negative 48 fifths. So this is negative 48 fifths. So for row 1, I'm keeping that the same. So a 1, a negative 6 fifths, and then a 24 fifths. For row 2, I'm going to take the result that I got, and I'm going to add. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. I'm going to have 12 fifths plus 7. So 12 fifths plus 7. 7, I could write that as 35 fifths. 12 plus 35 is 47. And then the common denominator of 5 is what that's going to be over. So that's 47 fifths. And then if we think about the next result, you'd have negative 48 fifths plus negative 28. So negative 48 fifths plus negative 28 times 5 is negative 140. So I'd have negative 140 over 5. So if I add these two together, negative 48 plus negative 140, that would give me negative 188. So I'd have negative 188 over 5. All right, so the next thing I want to do is make this a 1. I want 1s down the diagonal, 0 below. I've already got this part. I just need this part. So let's scroll down here. And it's very easy. I just multiply row 2 by the reciprocal of 47 fifths, which is 5 47 ths. So let's keep row 1 the same. So row 1 stays the same. A 1, a negative 6 fifths, and a 24 fifths. For row 2, again, if I multiply 5 over 47 by 0, I get 0. 5 over 47 times 47 over 5 is 1. And then 5 over 47 times negative 188 over 5. Well, I know the 5s would cancel. And negative 188 divided by 47 is actually negative 4. So at this point, I have enough information to get a solution. I know that y is equal to negative 4, right? So if y equals negative 4, I can plug in for y in this part. So I would have x minus 6 fifths y is equal to 24 fifths. Scroll down a little bit. And again, y is negative 4. So what we're going to get is that x minus 6 fifths times negative 4 is equal to 24 fifths. So we know negative times negative is positive. So you get x plus 6 times 4 is 24. So fifths equals 24 fifths. So we know x has to be 0, right? If I subtract 24 fifths away from each side of the equation, we would get x is equal to 0. So y equals negative 4, x equals 0. So you can pause the video, check and make sure that's the correct solution, the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 4. Now, I want to talk about reduced row echelon form. So we're going to go back to the row echelon diagram I gave you. All right, so we know at this point that row echelon form is 1's down the diagonal, a 0 below, and you have real numbers A, B, and C. So with this form, we have the information to go back and plug into the system and get our solution. But with reduced row echelon form, we don't have to go back and plug things in. We have our solutions. Let me show you that. This is called reduced row echelon form. So I would have ones down the diagonal still. So this is a one and this is a one. But everything in terms of the coefficients other than down the diagonal is going to be a zero. So it's a 0 here and a 0 here. 
And then you have two real numbers here on the right side of your vertical bar. So let's just say this is A and this is B. So with this guy right here, I don't need to use substitution because I know that 1x or just x is equal to A. So x equals A and then 1y or just y is equal to B. So I have my solution in this form without going back to plug things in. So you might ask the question, which one is faster? Well, generally, reduced row echelon form is going to be a little bit quicker because we don't have to go back and plug things in, right? We have x equals something, y equals something. So I want to just show you on that last example. So this is where we kind of stopped and used substitution. So let's pretend that we continued. So let me just copy this and bring it to a fresh sheet. So we already know y equals negative 4, x equals 0. In order to get that information, I want to make this part right here, this part right here, into a zero. I already know that y is negative 4. I've got that information. But I want to know x is equal to 1. So how could I make this into a zero? Well, you've got to think about what I could add to negative 6 fifths to get to zero. Negative 6 fifths plus what? This is easy. 6 fifths equals zero. Well, since this is a 1, I just need to multiply this by 6 fifths. So if I multiply row 2 by 6 fifths and add it to row 1, I'm going to get what I need. So let's set this up here. So let's set up row 2 is 0, 1, and negative 4. So that's already there. 0 times 6 fifths is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 6 fifths is 6 fifths. 6 fifths plus negative 6 fifths is 0. Negative 4 times 6 fifths, so negative 4 times 6 fifths. Negative 4 times 6 is going to give me negative 24, so I'd have negative 24 fifths. Now, negative 24 fifths plus 24 fifths is 0. So what did I find here now? I found that x is equal to 0, which is what it is. y is equal to negative 4, which is what it is. So with this form, I don't need to go back and plug things in. Okay, so in most cases, it's just a little bit quicker. All right, but I want you to understand both forms because you might get tested on. So you have row echelon form, which is this, and you have reduced row echelon form, which is this.